Vinod Agarwal, the MD and CEO at Volvo Rideshare uh, CV, joins in on the show right now. Vinod, hi, good morning, and first wishing you a very happy and healthy new year from all of us here. Good morning, and uh, I also wish you all a very, very happy new year. Right. You know, just wanted to understand, you know, you've clearly seen a very healthy volume pick up on a month and month as well as year on year basis. But what goes ahead now with, you know, many states now putting restrictions and curbs once again with the Omicron spread? Could that really dampen the CV recovery that you've already set at? Uh, definitely, I think that's a sort of uncertainty that has got created uh, due to this. Uh, but overall, uh, for the CV industry, we continue to remain very, very positive. And uh, we are very hopeful that uh, this Omicron uh, should not become that serious as was there in wave two last year. So therefore, uh, CV industry, as you know, uh, this has been, this has faced a lot of challenges in the past two years. And, uh, and now it is on the recovery path. And there is a lot of uh, headroom for growth. Uh, if you look at our earlier peak levels of CV industry, like if you look at uh, industry excluding three and a half ton and below, uh, it was at 557,000 in 2018-19. And uh, this year, first nine months, it is only at 225,000 with all that recovery that we have seen in the past. So in spite of that recovery, still the monthly levels of industry or the current volumes are still far away from the earlier peak. Therefore, there is a uh, huge room for growth as far as the CV industry is concerned. And we are very, very positive uh, on that. And, uh, and of course, this recovery will also happen because there is huge pent up demand. Replacements have not happened in the past few years. And uh, we are going to see all that replacement. Uh, new trucks, uh, like after this BS6 were introduced, they are much more productive, like we are selling 100% connected trucks, much more productive trucks. Therefore, it makes a lot of sense uh, to replace the older trucks. So we are going to see a lot of replacements. Apart from that, uh, there is a huge focus on infrastructure. And, uh, and uh, one good thing that has happened in past few months, we have seen a very big pickup in the haulage trucks. So apart from construction trucks, we have seen recovery in the haulage trucks. Therefore, uh, I think except for this latest uncertainty due to Omicron, other than that, uh, the industry looks to be very positive. Sure. You know, the other thing we know that I wanted to understand was the exports market. Considering they contribute to over 10% of your total volume pie, how's the export market been and uh, whether growth there continues to be strong? Export markets, uh, they are very, very important part of our strategy. And uh, last few years, we have added a lot of new markets uh, in our um, export strategy, like, for example, uh, we are becoming uh, more and more strong in uh, uh, African markets, developed markets of Africa, like South Africa, or we are becoming stronger in uh, Middle East. We are becoming stronger in Southeast Asia. And uh, earlier, we were only uh, exporting largely to India-like markets of Bangladesh, Nepal, etc. But now we have spread our reach to Middle East, to more African countries, uh, to Southeast Asia, like Indonesia and Malaysia. So therefore, you will see uh, more and more volumes coming from exports as far as we are concerned. Now, the car industry is suffering with chip shortage. Is there a chip shortage issue for the CV industry also? Yes, uh, we are facing that. And uh, especially uh, as far as we are concerned, we are facing the shortage uh, for the issues for our CNG trucks. Uh, you have seen huge migration from diesel to CNG fuel, uh, in especially in the light and medium duty trucks. Therefore, uh, this demand uh, increase that has happened, I think the industry didn't anticipate. And the uh, issues, especially for the CNG trucks, uh, we are having that constraint. And uh, other than that, uh, issue is largely is a constraint for the entire auto industry. And that is still continuing. and. Uh, 
and I think that will still continue for some more time to come. So, how much are you losing because of the chip shortage in terms of production loss? Uh, it's very difficult to point out, but of course, uh, if you ask me, we would have lost uh, maybe around uh, 1,000 trucks uh, even last month because we didn't get enough uh, issues for CNG trucks. And in terms of the price hike, which every auto company has taken because of high product prices, raw material prices going higher, have you managed to pass on everything? Uh, the increase of uh, steel, tub, uh, you know, tire, rubber, plastic, has everything been a pass through or you were forced to retain it? Uh, inflation has been very high as you have seen the wholesale price index also moving up in double digits uh, last uh, till now in last nine months. And uh, so it's not possible to pass on the entire increase. We have made price increases, uh, you know, uh, very regularly, but at the same time, uh, it is not easy to recover the price because uh, our customers, they are also in tremendous pain as far as the, uh, their, uh, uh, their business model is concerned because uh, fuel, uh, fuel prices have gone up significantly, especially the, if you look at the diesel price high, uh, it used to be 60 rupees to a diesel in April 2020 in Delhi. Right now it is around 86. So it means it has increased by almost 50%. Now, diesel accounts for almost uh, 50 to 60 percent of the cost of ownership of a transporter. Now, if his uh, main uh, cost goes up by uh, 60 percent, it means uh, he has to get the increase of almost 30 percent in the freight rates if he has to remain at the same level of profitability. Now, the freight rates have gone up only 50 to 20 percent. So, therefore, the transporters, they are in tremendous pain. Uh, because of the huge hike in the uh, fuel prices. Uh, now, if they are in pain, uh, then that pain gets passed on to the OEMs because when they buy trucks, they are not willing to uh, you know, pay the price, right price. And they, they negotiate very hard. And because of still the industry is at low volumes, capacity utilization, they are low. Therefore, the uh, competitiveness uh, or competitive forces, uh, you know, they play the role and uh, the discounts keep on going up. And as a result of that, uh, even those who are making price increases, on the other hand, uh, discounts also keep on going up. Good morning. So, you know, what we saw at the end of the September quarter was a company going back to profit and uh, huge growth. And 50% of the business was actually coming in then from the CNG vehicles. Is that still very much the trend? Yes, CNG uh, trucks have uh, started selling more in the light and medium duty. As far as the heavy duty trucks are concerned, still there is no CNG. So therefore, in our light and medium duty segment, uh, we have seen huge migration. Uh, right now, around 40% of the light and medium duty truck market has moved to CNG. But as I mentioned, uh, CNG trucks, we have faced constraints uh, in supply because of the issues. So as a result of that, even though the market uh, you know, percentage by the of the total market has gone up, but the because of non-availability of ECUs, uh, we have suffered. So, so it means uh, the percentage uh, last month, of course, uh, it would have been less. Like uh, for example, out of uh, our total sale of six thousand plus trucks, and trucks and buses, uh, the CNG would be just around thirteen hundred or fourteen hundred. So, so it's not much, but the potential for Increase in CNG sales is very high because these issues with problem will get solved. So that uh, seems to be the focus at the moment. Uh, so there you have it, your chip shortage very much continuing as far as commercial vehicles go. There's of course a double whammy or triple whammy, uh, inflation, supply chain constraints and transporters who are also hurting and therefore passing on the hikes is very difficult. Uh, Stagraval, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us live today on The Market. Happy New Year once again. Thank you. Thank you very much.